Hi, I'm Ann Churchland, and I'm an experimentalist at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, working on the neural circuits for perceptual decision making. I think right now there's a really strong need for models that take into account the heterogeneity of cell types that are found in the cortex and indeed the rest of the brain. So for a long time, models have encapsulated the idea that there are excitatory and inhibitory neurons, but now we know so much more about those neurons, that there are different subtypes within each group. There are subtypes of excitatory neurons, certainly many subtypes of inhibitory neurons, some of them that we can very easily manipulate experimentally. And so one advance that is starting to take place, but I think really needs to gain momentum, is models and theories that take into account the heterogeneity of responses that have, uh, have, have been observed and now are starting to be much more deeply appreciated given the modern tools that we have for tagging and manipulating specific populations of cells. I think the reason we need to promote theory in neuroscience is that at this moment in the field, there has never been a greater need to have the perspective of theoretical neuroscientists to, uh, to assist us in interpreting our data. We can now record from large numbers of neurons, uh, huge populations, many more so than have previously been recorded simultaneously. And this large population data is something that as a field, we have yet to fully understand how to interpret. We need to develop the right tools to interpret those large scale recordings and theorists can be of tremendous assistance with that particular enterprise. And secondly, we need theorists because of the recent experimental techniques that have come on board in the last 10 or 15 years that have allowed us, many experimentalists to ask circuit level questions with far greater precision than was previously possible. And some of those, those kinds of experiments that we do involve manipulating particular populations of neurons. And interpreting the results of those manipulations is extremely complicated, but we don't really have a framework for thinking about it. And so if we are to make the best use of the powerful tools that have become available to us in the field, we need to have theoretical frameworks that make it possible to more precisely interpret the outcomes of those experiments than we currently have. So I think that's a really exciting new development that can dovetail with the exciting developments within experimental neuroscience to really advance the field and to move ourselves forward with the goal that we all share of understanding brain function.